So before we start with the quick introduction to driverless AI, let's make sure that you have your instances running for Aquarium. Aquarium is our um, hands-on tutorial infrastructure. So please make sure to go to aquarium.h2o.ai, create an account if you haven't done so already, and then check your email for the password, paste that into the login information there. And once you're in, uh, you want to start your driverless instance and say start, right? You want to just click on it and, and just wait. Don't do anything else. It'll take a few minutes to start it up, and then it'll be up for four hours. So you don't need to worry about doing anything else. You just leave it running. That way, when we get to it later, it will be uh, ready for you to just jump in and do experiments together with us. Does anybody have problems? Then raise your hands. There's enough staff to help with you. So why do we do driverless AI? Since I started doing machine learning in 2011, 2012, I've always seen that the hardest part actually is not necessarily the algorithm, but it's to know what to do with the data, right? How to make a proper validation split and so on. So data scientists are in high demand and it's getting only worse basically because people have more and more data, businesses have more and more data, but you're not quite sure what to do with it. And helping with the data scientists to become more productive is important. <coughs> so it's not about replacing them, it's about empowering them to give them tools so that they can be more productive and help businesses make better decisions. And <coughs> the role of driverless AI is basically to automate these black boxes there. So you have data that comes in, ideally data with outcomes, so you know what happened in the past, you know, you know what, what you recorded, you have some, some labels, some supervised machine learning, we call it, and from then on, the, 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 the driverless AI system takes over. Of course, you have to still control it a little bit, but you don't have to worry about feature engineering as much as I used to. You don't have to worry about uh, tuning parameters is it depth five or depth seven for a GPM, for example? Is that something you really want to know by hand and figure out each time? No, it's better that a machine does it, right? Um, and sampling, uh, not to overfit, how do you know that you're measuring the right um, number when you, when you make predictions on what test set or what holdout set? Is it a validation set or is it a test set? Is it a cross-validation? What's going on? How do you even know what's the right thing? And we help with that. And there's a lot of techniques built into that system that's Kaggle Grandmaster level, right? So it's, it's really sophisticated. And out comes, at the end, a system that makes predictions, either in driverless or as a standalone artifact that you can put in production anywhere. Java runs anywhere, includes all the feature engineering, all is baked into the standalone mojo. And that you can deploy on Spark, deploy on Amazon, Lambda, wherever you want. And we'll also have a C++ version of that coming soon. You also have a deployable package that makes uh, recent codes, so you can figure out why some things happened. And it's not just recent codes, it's also Shapley values and so on. You'll see much more about that later. But the, the automation is pretty um, tremendous. Autoways, the automatic report documentation, um, everything is, is, is part of it. And then once you know what's going on, maybe you see something that's interesting, you'll make the data better, right? You'll say, okay, wow, I didn't know that the data had this property. Or maybe I should get more data so we can do another uh, experimentation. So you can spend time with the data instead of uh, time with the keyboard typing in stuff over and over. Now, it's not a vertical, it's a horizontal, right? It can do anything. It's a platform for machine learning and data science. So you can throw in any data you have that's in a structured way, a tabular data set. So imagine a big Excel table. It can have numbers, strings, text, missing values, but it's not meant for images right now, but we're working on that. Any industries will work fine. And our customers have um, expressed their joy in seeing the automation take place. So you'll hear more from them in the coming day. And um, you can definitely talk to them, take the opportunity to speak to each other and, and hear what they're doing. I think the use cases are pretty impressive. And uh, H2O uh, Driverless AI has won the Technology of the Year Award twice now in a row by uh, InfoWorld, so that's pretty nice. 
and it obviously works. So we test this regularly on Kaggle problems. This is one that I like particularly much because in two hours on my home PC two days ago, I was able to get to the 12th place on a Kaggle competition. And we got to all the way to 10th place if you let it run a little longer, but this is 3,000 Kagglers competing for two months, and this is at the 10th place, right? So it's pretty good. It can, it can really figure out the interactions in the data set, the, the target encoding and so on. There's a lot of sophistication in this product. And when you have categorical and numerical columns and they interact, you can squeeze out information with statistics. This is not just tuning parameters. There's a lot of stuff going on inside of driverless. And this is a blog I, I was fortunate enough to have time to write in December. So if you are interested in the making of driverless, go to h2ai slash blog. A lot of good team plays going on at H2O, a lot of maker culture, lots of talent. So all these features have been hammered out in just a little over a year. You see about every three months we have another release, 1.1, 1, 1.2, 1, 1, 1, 1.3, 1, 1.4, and now we're at 1.5. 152 is the latest version which came out this weekend. So the team has really been working hard to make this possible. And your feedback is appreciated and welcome and required. So if you have something that you want, we want to hear that, right? We are not here to make ourselves a toy. We are here to build you a tool. So the feature here at the bottom, that's your feature. You tell us what you like and we will put it in. And that's literally the case. It takes only sometimes weeks or months for you to get your feature. Patrick will talk about the interpretation part in the next presentation. He's the expert, world expert in this field. So definitely listen carefully. Leland, also a world expert in visualization, also will be presenting right after great friend of mine, long-term partner. And inside of driverless, the, the secrets, if you want, for how we get to higher accuracy is, is really feature engineering. That's at the core of, of, of driverless. Feature engineering is the art of taking your Excel file and making new columns, basically. And these columns can be made not just from other values in the same row, but from other rows. So you look at what's everybody doing, not just me, right? And then you have to be smart about not leaking that information. You can't cheat. So you have to be very sophisticated in the statistics department, especially for time series where you have to make causal relationships. You can't look into the future to predict the past, right? It wouldn't make sense in production either, but you have to think about these things carefully. And then once you have something that predicts something, like a machine learning model, then how do you know it's better than the last one you had? So you have to measure it, and you have to measure it on a holdout set that you don't cheat, right? You have to always keep measuring on something where you didn't fit the model on. But if you use the same holdout over and over, then it's also cheating, because then you, you just get good at this one holdout data set. You can predict that really well, but not the one in production tomorrow. So there's even techniques to overcome those issues. They're all baked in. So a, a regular experiment takes thousands and thousands of models and features and finds the best combination using evolutionary strategies. And of course, it's not only statistical, it's also deep learning. Who here has heard of deep learning? Who wants to do deep learning but hasn't yet? Right? There's a lot of people who want to do deep learning because it's really hot. And my, I myself would like to do more reinforcement learning, maybe here and there something, but does it really apply to the problem we're solving? Well, yeah, sure, there are some places, and driverless AI has a lot of deep learning baked into it, but also a lot of statistical learning. Linear models, clustering, gradient boosting, dimensionality reduction, all these techniques are useful. There's a reason statistics works, right? It's math. Science is math. All of nature is math. So we can't just say, we don't want that, we just want the brute force multiplies, which also is math. So obviously deep learning will work if you have the right input, like an image or sound or, or text, and you can do amazing things with it. But if you have an Excel file with just columns, deep learning might not be the most efficient way at translating that into predictive power. Gradient boosting machines are the winners at Kaggle for those kinds of problems. So having both makes it even better. 
Now for times here, as I mentioned, you have to be careful about the validation scheme. You want to have multiple rolling windows, predict from a few months, predict the next few weeks and so on, and then shift that over time. We're doing all that in the product so that you get confidence that your model is actually able to generalize into the future. Natural language processing is important. A lot of people have data with text in it, right? What did the customer say on the phone? It somehow got translated to text, and now they have a lot of text. Maybe not in the perfect form, maybe a little bit um, full of, of you know, stop words, uh, things that you don't want. So clean that up a little, automate that, let a deep learning model turn this text into a sequence of numbers, put the numbers into the neural net, crunch out what comes next or what it means, and that's it. Out comes uh, a vector, a numeric vector, that you can throw into a machine learning algorithm that then makes predictions from it. So text is nothing but numbers once you know that the word hello is number 7,412, for example. And it's just this mapping. And you can even map characters. You can put one character after another, map them each to a number, and say this is the string of numbers, what comes next, or what does it mean? Is this a good or a bad sentiment? Stuff like that has been done for years. It's now all fully featured in driverless AI. We have three different types of, of, of text TensorFlow graphs. Two are CNN-based, one is LSTM-based, and you can choose which ones you want. You also have classical statistic count-based features, right? You can count how many times does the word me, me, me show up in this sentence. If it's too many me's, then it means something compared to the average in a, do in a regular document. So you don't need to go to great extent to figure out that the word me shows up too many times in this sentence. You don't need to have a neural net tell you that. You can just count. And for example, when the experiment's done, what do you do with it? We used to make a PDF, but people preferred a Word document, so now it's a Word document. Isn't that great? You can just take it and edit it and then send it off and it populates it with all the information that you want. And if you have a specific need for your company, we can customize that template. In fact, that's what we're doing for some of our customers. You can always go to docs.h2o.ai to get more information about driverless, about the uh, parameters. There are still some knobs, as Shri showed you, there's three knobs, right? Time and accuracy, interpretability, those three kind of matter the most, but there's other parameters that you can control, and some of those are documented in great detail. Others might need some help, so let us know how you feel about the product, if you have any questions. There's also a Slack channel that you can chat to us real time. All of this can be found on this website. Uh, and later